Banks are preparing for a massive credit crisis which could plunge the entire world economy into recession or even worse, depression. And this all started last week with the failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. These were the number two and number three biggest bank failures of all time according to the FDIC. And these failures have completely paralyzed the US banking system and the CEOs of other big banks are now fearful that theirs is going to be next. And as a result, I suspect there's going to be a big credit crunch throughout the rest of 2023 where these banks stop making loans, de-risk their portfolios, and they stockpile cash. We can see this credit crunch was actually already happening at the end of 2022 when there was a big surge in banks tightening credit and restricting lending. You could see each of the other times in the last 30 years that banks have restricted credit, we've had a big recession. And if if we do have this credit crisis in America in 2023, it's gonna be ugly. It's gonna look a lot like 2008. The failure of Silicon Valley Bank this year is reminding me a lot of something that actually happened in the spring of 2008. And that was the failure of Bear Stearns. Bear Stearns was a big investment bank and in March 2008, they went bust. An ABC News article from March 2008 asked, is Bear Stearns just the beginning? Bear Stearns fell victim to what was essentially a bank run, investors who feared that the firm was too deeply invested in bad mortgages cut off funding, crippling the firm. I mean, wow, folks, replace 2008 with 2023, replace Bear Stearns with Silicon Valley Bank, and replace bad mortgages with bad tech companies, and that article could have been written this past week. And this comparison really scares me, everyone, because back in March 08, Bear Stearns was the canary in the coal mine that then preceded the worst financial crash since the Great Depression. I mean, we had the unemployment rate go to 10%, the stock market went down 50%, the housing market went down 25%, and all of that happened basically after the Bear Stearns collapse. And so when I see people today in 2023 starting to think that the crisis has been averted by the government bailout of Silicon Valley Bank, I say, hold on, not so fast. Especially when I see people in the housing market suddenly getting a more bullish perspective because of this. For instance, a CNN article this week had the headline, Mortgage Rates Drop in Wake of Bank Failures. And they quoted the CEO of the Mortgage Bankers Association who said that anticipated further rate declines may spur additional mortgage applications as the spring home buying season begins. And so folks, are you seeing the spin that the mainstream financial community is putting on this? They're starting to kind of nudge you a little bit to think that you should buy because mortgage rates are declining in the wake of these bank failures. And there was similar were FOMO tactics going on in the beginning of 2008 before the housing crash got really bad. We had headlines back then, like this one from June 2008 that said median home prices have risen three straight months. The Wall Street Journal also had headlines back then suggesting something similar, that there was a bottom in home sales that was hit in June 2008. So I'd encourage a lot of you would-be home buyers out there, don't take the bait because a banking crisis, even if it causes mortgage rates to go down a little bit, is likely not good for the economy and housing market. And luckily, most home buyers aren't taking the bait. Mortgage applications to buy a house are still at pitifully low levels, an index of 166, which is down 40% from where it was a year ago and down 50% from where it was two years ago. So the regular home buyer is still out on the US housing market. They haven't come close to coming back. However, there is a segment of the real estate market that is taking the bait and is thinking that the crash is over, and that is real estate investors. I'm seeing a pretty sizable uptick in real estate investor activity in the housing market over the last one to two months. Now, this uptick in investor activity follows a huge crash in investor home buying at the end of 2022, but unfortunately, a lot of these investors are still sitting on some cash, and even though it makes no sense to buy at today's interest rates and mortgage rates, a lot of them are still doing it. Like just two days ago, I was touring around Nashville and I found a rental that was on the market. So I went to the rental to record one of the shorts that you see on my channel sometimes. And I actually ran into the landlord of that rental when I was doing that. And he told me that he bought it a month ago from the builder and he used a loan. He actually used a 6.7% rate mortgage to do it. And I asked him, well, why'd you do that? Because at a 6.7% mortgage rate, that's way above the, the cap rate or the profit you're getting if you do rent this property out. And he said, yeah, I know I'm not gonna make any money, but I just wanna do it anyway. I'm investing for the long term. Meaning that that landlord I met, even if he 
rents the property out, he will likely be losing money after paying his lender the mortgage interest. However, he didn't care. He just wanted to buy real estate. And I think one thing I underestimated was how stubborn some of these real estate investors are. And until you know they see like massive panic and pain in the economy, a lot of them are still gonna keep buying, unfortunately, especially people with cash. I mean, if people have millions of dollars in the bank and they see all of a sudden that banks are going under, these people might want to buy a house because at least if they buy a house, maybe they'll only lose 30% of their value instead of 100% if the bank goes under. And I think another thing that actually might be prompting some of these investors to buy is that they look at the Fed and they look at Jerome Powell and they don't take Jerome Powell seriously in his fight against inflation because the Federal Reserve, in their effort to bail out Silicon Valley Bank and the banking system, just printed $300 billion in one week. Just take a look at the Fed balance sheet, everyone. It was going down over the last six months due to quantitative tightening. This was good because it was lowering the money supply, which was gonna lower inflation, but then bam, in one week, plus $300 billion, and that is Money printing, folks, that money didn't exist a week ago. The Fed printed it into existence and then they loaned it to the FDIC and to commercial banks around America to shore up the banking system. Now, some people are saying that this money printing is not inflationary because the Fed loaned the money at an interest rate to the FDIC in these banks, and this money needs to be paid back. For instance, according to CNBC, banks borrowed 153 billion, about 50% of the money printing from the discount window, which provides loans for up to 90 days. So this money printing wasn't exactly like the money printing that happened during the pandemic, where the Fed literally just helicoptered cash into the economy with no strings attached. And so there's a chance within 90 days that this money printing gets negated when the FDIC and the banks pay back the Fed. However, I still think this is a bad, bad look for the Federal Reserve. Because how do you credibly fight inflation and say you're taking inflation seriously when you so quickly jump to print $300 billion into the banking system. It sends a very confused and very mixed message that increases the uncertainty in the economy, which is why Jerome Powell at the next Fed meeting next week on March 22nd needs to come out and be very resolute and clear that inflation is the number one priority and he needs to come up with a plan to get rid of this expansion in the Fed balance sheet ASAP. If he does that, I think maybe this won't be inflationary, but if, if he waffles and if he presents a mixed message, uh, it's gonna be a problem. And I think inflation could continue, which would be bad for you as a home buyer because it's gonna mean more investors buying and it's gonna push up prices. But of course, everyone, None of this is guaranteed. Things are very uncertain right now. And the banking credit crunch I talked about in the beginning, I think that's still likely happening in the background. I think a lot of banks are still pretty freaked out by what happened to Silicon Valley Bank. I mean, 2023 is already the worst year for bank failures in US history based on the deposits held by banks that failed. So only two banks have so far failed in 2023. They had 263 billion in deposits. That's more than what happened in 2008. That's more than what happened in the savings and loan crisis in the late 80s. And we're only three months into the year. And so if other banks go under, uh, this banking crisis and the credit crunch is gonna get worse. Especially now that Janet Yellen just confirmed that not all banks in America are actually gonna have their depositors bailed out. She was testifying in front of the Senate and she got a question from the Senator in Oklahoma who said, will the deposit in every community bank in Oklahoma be fully insured now? Will they get the same treatment that SVB got? Yellen acknowledged they would not. Uninsured deposits, she said, would only be covered in the event that the failure creates systemic risk and significant economic and financial consequences. So I guess this is good in one sense that at least Janet Yellen in the treasury is acknowledging we're not gonna just bail out everyone. However, she's also basically acknowledging in that comment that to the extent a bank is big and is headquartered on either the East or West Coast, they're gonna get bailed out. But the smaller banks in the middle of America aren't gonna get bailed out. And that suggests to me that people are gonna start pulling their money out of smaller banks in the middle of America and putting it into bigger banks like 
JP Morgan and Bank of America, which is likely to lead to further consolidation of the banking system. In 2022, there was only 4,200 commercial banks in America. You can see this is down about 75% from the levels in the mid 1980s. Basically from 1934, when the FDIC was created to the mid 80s, we had around 14,000 banks. And since then, it has plummeted and plummeted, meaning that the deposits held per bank have surged. The average bank in inflation adjusted terms now holds 4.7 billion of deposits, whereas back in 2008, they only held 1.4 billion. And so Janet Yellen and the US government seem to be pushing an agenda where more and more, we're gonna see people pull money out of small banks and we're gonna see those banks fail and then they're gonna put it into big banks. And I don't really know if that's good or bad for the economy and financial institutions. Seems like it would create more systemic risk the more concentrated the banking system gets, but that's what's happening, everyone, and that's what you need to prepare for. And so, three key takeaways from this video. Number one, the banking crisis in America is likely to get worse, especially if banks go into a credit crunch like they did in 2008. Number two, that credit crunch is likely to lead to a recession and lower mortgage rates, but that doesn't necessarily mean the housing market's gonna benefit. However, number three, a lot of investors are ignoring these warnings and still buying homes. I think a lot of these investors are gonna get hit very, very hard. However, in order for that to happen, Jerome Powell needs to credibly commit to fighting inflation.